tenderness, love and compassion. I'm good if I have it. Yeah. New year almost here. Time to shift gears now. Time to keep the building, take it to another tip. Uh, hungry for progression. Like Happy Jupiter Day. Happy Jupiter Day, family. Happy Juju vibes. How we feeling today? How we feeling today? We, we're preparing for that full moon. Do we start? Do I start with Aquarius? Nah, nah, nah. I'm getting into some energies real quick. We're going and I'm gonna run through full moon and Leo through the houses. All right, through the houses. All right, we're gonna try to get through this in one live. I got my notes. I'm here prepped. All right, <laughs> Marisol Ferrari. Melissa Sierra 05, God gifted lie. Why deceive? My boy Red Show J knows in the building, man. Y'all go check out, bro. He's forever dropping gems. All right. Y'all go pick up more Astro gems over there. Toys World 2016, Charm Treasure. Hija de mi padre. 333. Rocky Baby. All right. We in the building. We in the building. We in the building. We in the building. All right, guys. So y'all know the vibe, man. Sun and Aquarius, moon and Gemini, double air vibes. Uh, this is the last day we dealing with the moon and Gemini until uh, the moon moves into Taurus tomorrow. All right. So I already told y'all we're going to have that earth energy, that moon and earth transit over the weekend. But we prepping for that, you know, through this Gemini moon transit. So we know when the moon is Gemini, new ideas. We become more flexible and adaptable around this time. All right. We start to see ways we could move things in other departments of our life. We start analyzing things we're working on or our relationships through different perspectives when the moon is in Gemini. You know, you start thinking about things differently when the moon is in Gemini. All right. Now, um, but overall, you know, desire to connect, relate, communicate. OK, um, so we got that going on. My mutable signs. All right. Mutable signs, my Pisces, my uh uh, my motherfucking uh, Saggies, all right? My Pisces, my Saggies, my Virgos. Y'all got to be the ones to start thinking about things from a different perspective, be, being a bit more logical right now during this transit, all right? So we can't be too too invested into our feelings right now. We got Venus and Mars over there harmonizing right now. So that's bringing a, that's, that's mixing a whole bunch of love and passion and aggression, all right? All in the same pot. So when it comes to love circumstances, when it comes to things that we love or pleasures that we may uh, connect to to feel fulfilled, all right, in the name of a person, place or thing, these are things we're going to be more aggressive and power and controlling with at the moment. But with the moon and Gemini, we have to be more logical about how we do things, all right, especially when it comes to relationships. We have to be way more logical, all right? Now we're dealing with full moon energies, all right? We're already in them. We're already in the energies, Okay. So just because the full moon ain't at 100% of its peak, shit, don't mean you ain't feeling 85% of that full illumination. <laughs> don't mean don't mean uh 80% of that bitch being full don't feel like anything. So we getting closer and closer to the peak. So when we look at the, um, matter of fact, before we even get to the full moon, another uh, significant transit, Mercury and Pluto, they're forming a conjunction in Capricorn tomorrow. All right, so they're already one degree apart. They're already uh, conjunct, but they become, uh, they become directly conjunct tomorrow uh, in Capricorn. Mercury rules how we think, right? Mercury rules how we think and how we communicate, how we process our thoughts. Pluto deals with you know rebirths, transformate transformation, our deep desires, okay? And Pluto can be aggressive as hell too. So now. This causes a bunch of, uh, this stimulates and intensifies mental activity. See, Mars, yesterday I said this on live, Mars has a real stealthy energy to it. So if you look at Aries and Scorpios, they don't like giving out a lot for you to read them because they want to be the ones reading people. That's how Mars moves. It's more, uh, it gravitates more towards the intentions of an individual. So you dating a Scorpio, dating an Aries, it may feel like that from the whole the whole honeymoon process, the whole couple of first dates. It just feel like they possibly they just interrogating you. They trying to find out what's behind the scenes. They read between the lines. That's Mars energy. It's real investigative life, especially if you have energies like in the eighth house. 
where Mars and Pluto are at. Excuse me, I'm talking about Pluto. I'm, I'm gonna, I started talking about Mars, Mars and Pluto like this. But yeah, that's that Pluto energy. Pluto dives deep. It, it investigates. Mars and Pluto both share this. Pluto just does it on a deeper scale when it comes to investigating, getting to the root of things. All right. So now we have Mercury next to that Pluto. Our mind, we're way more investigative, slightly paranoid, <laughs> slightly paranoid. You feel me? Aries and Scorpios just be having a natural slight paranoia to them, you know, because remember that Mars Pluto energy. It's always it can be. I don't want to say in defense mode because shit, that motherfucker be in attack mode, too. But it's always guarding itself. It's always guarding itself in some type of shape or form and trying to make sure the things that it intends to do ain't no distractions with that. All right. So this is the way we're going to be thinking, you know, way more deeper thought on our goals, motives, passions and intentions. All right. We can discover hidden information or hidden agendas around this time. So beware of that. Beware of that. You know, find ourselves being more in, uh, investigative aggressively. All right. Being way more inquisitive, you know, Mercury curious as hell. So Mercury already want to go and find all the details and information in the world. But now that is next to uh, Mars, it does it way more aggressively. So, you know, you one <laughs> one moment you can have real tact communicating with somebody, trying to get them to express something or answer questions without asking them another second. You know, you may be real forceful with it. All your stealth and tact is out the window with Mars being, I mean, Pluto being next to Mercury at times because it's just real forceful. All right. Um, impulsive communication, yet raw and transparent. And all of this we have to take into account because we're picking up full moon energies. Around full moon times, things are way more intense emotionally. You know, your emotional awareness is up here. You feel things on a level up here. You're way more sensitive to energies. The moon, when the moon is full, it gives us full access to the subconscious. All right. So a lot of things that are suppressed, a lot of things on your subconscious, all that should start raising up to the surface during a full moon transit or when we're getting close to the peak of it. All right. So as we start to have some of these emotions raise up to the surface in different areas in our life, specifically where the moon is at now, these signs before we get to the full moon. So where you have Gemini and Taurus at, you're picking the full moon energy as it's tra tra uh, transiting your house that you have Gemini and, and Taurus in before it gets into the house that you have Leo in. All right. So we are already in a state of releasing, detaching. That's why I want to go through the houses. So by the time the full moon gets to that house, you have Leo in. When you start picking up them emotions or feelings in that house, which you will, it's inevitable. It's a full moon. You understand how to navigate it, deal with it, process, digest it, and move. All right. So, uh, but yeah, with Mercury and Pluto being uh, conjunct there, impulsive communication, but raw and transparent. So expect motherfuckers to speak their they mind and their heart these next seven days this next week and a half all right expect that but especially this portion right now from now from today moving on to like the end of next week expect people to really communicate from a raw transparent place when people communicate to you around this time and it sounds like what they're saying are things that they may have been holding in or things that is kind of explosive then you know this ain't a temporary feeling. They've been suppressing this shit or they've been feeling like this or whatnot. These energies are just breaking shit to the surface. All right. Gemini sun rising with a Scorpio moon and I'm dating an Aries. Your Gemini sun rising with a Scorpio moon and you're dating an Aries. Okay, so her son, uh, you're a Gemini sun. So your son sextiles uh, the Aries sun. So when it comes to that, you, you're going to play out. You being a Gemini, you're going to be like... The air for a lot of the visions they have as the Aries, a lot of things they intend to do, a lot of things that they see themselves, their personal aspirations. You being a Gemini son, you naturally give that a lot of direction with your thoughts, ideas, ways to strategize things, helping the Aries understand how to move on a lot of them things. And then you got a, a Scorpio rising. So your chart's already ruled by Mars with the Scorpio moon. I'm a Gemini sun and a rising with a Scorpio. So you got Mars energy on your uh, sun and moon. Scorpio and Aries, they both rule my Mars by mars but they're two different constellations uh still so you bring that understanding of dealing with 
you know, at times isolation, your individuality to the most individual signs in the zodiac because of that Mars emphasis. All right. Yeah. But it's going to be a sense of matching each other's passion. When you got people with Aries placements, Scorpio placements coming together, you know, it makes things very passionate. A lot of times these individuals feel like they need to be with people that match their passion. So if you look at an Aries dating somebody, it's not by mistake if that other if that other individual might have some Scorpio placements. You see a Scorpio dating somebody, it's not going to be by mistake if you see who they dating got some Aries placements. And in many ways, that's how you learn about yourself because Mars rules both them signs. But since you are... Uh, a Scorpio moon and rising. When you meet the Aries, they show you another side of that Mars. All right. How to project your Mars, how to express your Mars, how to take action on your Mars. You show them how to understand the Mars, how to feel the Mars, how to receive situations dealing with Mars because you Scorpio moon. So a real passionate, spicy little combination there. All right. So all right, uh, Mercury and Pluto, new ideas and perspectives on our passions and goals and things that frustrate us as well. But we could be real suspicious and potentially manipulative at the moment. All right, so just because your mind attract man uh, manipulative ass ideas don't mean your body got to move on it. Okay, but it can bring up this type of energy. All right, y'all, full moon in Leo. I'm going to run through this. Okay, yesterday I was on live for three fucking hours. I don't be realizing it. I, like, I really don't be realizing it as I'm talking that time is flying like that. <laughs> like, I swear to God, I don't be realizing that shit. So I couldn't even get that up on YouTube. That was too much work to get it up on YouTube. So I'm like, All right, I got to make better effort to, to uh, get energies out in the live. And it just makes it easier for me to timestamp as well, guys. So uh, I got my notes. I'm going to run through them. Full moon in Leo, February 16th. It peaks around 10 a.m. Eastern. Okay, I do. I do. Yes, I do. I am. Uh, she's so free. You're right. Get carried away. You know, every sign's going to get carried away with talking. Um, so this full moon in Leo, we know full moons are always going to be opposite from the sun. All right. They're always going to be opposite from the sun. I like to say I like to say full moons are emotional checkpoints. All right. They're checkpoints for our emotional well-being. All right. And our subconscious full moons illuminate the subconscious. So things that's heavy on your subconscious, they all become highlighted and come to the surface level around this time. OK, now the full moon is going to be peaking at 27 degrees. All right. So if you have any planets of 27 in 27 degrees of a fixed sign, which is uh, Scorpio, Taurus, or uh Scorpio Taurus or uh motherfucking uh catch it, Aquarius. If you have planets 27 degrees of any of those fixed signs and in Leo too, all right, this, is, this energy is gonna pull on you, all right? It's gonna pull, it's gonna pull on them emotions for sure around this time. All right. Especially if it's a sun and moon, 27 degrees around this area. Now now, we know full moons are dealing with detaching, all right? Full moons are dealing with detaching. We experience this energy right before we prep for Pisces season, all right? So, with in my, in my analysis of a full moon transiting Leo, me personally, Leo deals with, you know, pride, the solar plexus, you know, being seen, you know, saying shit with your chest, expression, creativity, all right? Conducting yourself on the stage, dealing with attention and spotlight. So with the full moon dealing with detaching, with the full moon transit in Leo, there's going to be a lot of ego deaths. Like I said this on live yesterday, there's going to be a lot of ego deaths people are experiencing at the moment. All right. And these ego deaths are helping you uh, and humbling spirit to get us closer, you know, to certain uh, visions or potential that we see of ourselves. The full moon in Leo will pick up. Heavy emotion on all Leo related things, on all Leo related things, which is the relationship with the inner child. All right. How you deal with your creative endeavors, how you deal with self expressing yourself, creatively expressing yourself, your efforts put towards them things. All right. These are all the things that you feel heavy on connection with your children. If you have children, that becomes more of an emphasis here. All right. The full moon also deals with the, uh, you know, the ability to feel fulfilled. So if we know Leo energy deals with fun, entertainment, right? The childlike, the relationship with the childlike energy within you. Around this time, we're going to be seeing how we 
are unfulfilled when it comes to Leo energies. All right. Some of us going to start realizing like, yo, all I do is work and be in the fucking house. All right. Where do I, how do I stimulate my creativity? What new things am I experiencing? What do I even do to entertain myself? Like we're going to start realizing we unfulfilled in that area as well. All right. Or dealing with them energies. So these are things we pick up heavy emotion on around the time, but full moon in Leo, your subconscious is lit up. So anything that's been repressed, suppressed when it comes to Leo like energies, how you express yourself, these are things that's going to be, uh, they're going to be felt heavily around this time. All right. Now it's important to know this is a completion of a six month lunar cycle. So this cycle started last year, 2021, August 8th. You want to go back to August 8th last year and see where your state of mind was at, see what you was creating, what you was working on at the moment. Where where where, where was your all them W's? Where was your emotional well-being at? All right, at the moment. Okay? And how were you dealing with forms of creative expression, self-expression and whatnot? You want to see where your state of mind was at that moment because right now we're, with this full moon, this is more of a completion process. So that's what makes this full moon very important too. This is a completion process. So we want to feel more evolved when it looks when we look at things dealing with how we express ourselves, our self-identity, how we're seen, creative endeavors, the relationship with the childlike uh, energy within us, you know, how we have fun, how we go about being entertained. How we deal with our social our social life. And also uh, love and romance. We could tie some of them themes in with Leo energy too. All right. <laughs> For real though. I do though. I do though. This is too much. Everything I be. Uh, every time I be trying to convey shit. Articulate shit. I always be running in all type of tongue twisters. So. That's the problem. See that. I got stellium and Scorpio, so Scorpio energy take time processing shit. But I'm a Libra though, so we just be da 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 da, and that, some shit don't even be processed. Motherfucker, lips still moving though, niggas still communicating though. Shit. So shout out to all my air signs. Shout out to all my air signs. I got uh, a water Mercury. Shit, little tough. Shit, little tough. Getting the uh, internal energies and the communication style on the same page. So. <laughs> can't be a deep thinker and a fast communicator it's gonna be a class somewhere in there now uh i like to say so yeah i like to say this full moon the leo is gonna deal with a lot of ego deaths there may be a potential that you look at at yourself you feel like you believe you're capable of doing this that and the third you should be in this position you should be regarded as this seen as this and you just staring at that vision at that potential that's going to be felt heavy around this time you know you just looking at that potential looking at that vision what effort are you putting into it how are you nurturing that vision how are you pouring into that these are all the things that pop up around this time you feel me um so yeah let's just get right into the houses let's get right into the houses once again family full moons detaching releasing i like to say you know, we often say this is not a time for manifesting, but in a way it is. In a way, full moons are a time for manifesting because, you know, you don't want to take action on it. You don't necessarily want to be, you know, so direct into jumping into the new idea that you have around this time. But this is the time where we digest shit. This is the time where we digest our feelings and emotions. We acknowledge them. We understand things. We, uh, once again, the, the full moon is illuminating the house that is transiting. So you're going to be picking up on heavy energies in that area. So you want to acknowledge what you're picking up on. And once we get closer to a new moon cycle, that's when you want to take more initiative, set, uh, you know, setting new intentions or not even setting new intentions, but taking more initiative, you know, walking the walk around the things that you're realizing and understanding now. OK, so let me get through it. Leo risings, Leo risings. This is if you have the full moon transiting, getting ready to transit the first house. All right. Now, the first house deals with your personal issues, personal circumstances, your personality, how you personally express yourself, personal aspirations, everything with your goddamn personal life, people, places and things that you're uh, personally connected to. So what does this mean? Leo risings, you got the full moon transiting in your first house. So all personal issues is highly illuminated. Things that bother you about people, places, and things in your personal life, these are the things you may feel impulsive to react to, all right? So we got to be conscious of, once again, 
how we're taking initiative, reacting to things, acting on things instead of understanding and digesting things. There may be some personal issues you have right now, personal responsibilities that you don't want them shits no more. You don't want them shits no more. You don't feel like upholding this personal relationship no more. You don't feel like or you have personal habits you need to evolve from right now that hold you back from personally evolving at the moment. These are all the things that you can start to feel heavy on right now. So I like to say a bunch of big personal changes here. All changes that you need to make in your first house with how you conduct yourself personally, especially when it comes to how you present yourself, your self-identity, you know how you personally express yourself. These are all things that you're going to be feeling heavy on, thinking heavy on. All right. Anything that you you suppress when it comes to how you personally express yourself, these things come up to the surface level. Now, the first has the first house does rule the body. All right. The head, the body. So Leo rises. Y'all got to be careful around this time that y'all not, you know, jumping off the motherfucking edge of the cliff and being drastic or dramatic and making, you know, dramatic changes to your to your body. You know, cutting your hair off, getting a face tat. You know, doing this and the third because you feel like you need to align with the changes. You don't need to do all that shit just because you got the full moon chance in your first house and then you attracting some of these ideas and shit. All right. The physical change is it's only going to make you feel like you're supporting the internal changes. We just need to acknowledge what personally needs to be changed. Now, in a positive way, you may feel like, you know, that haircut or whatever, maybe a fresh start or whatnot. And sometimes it, it, it resonates like that for certain certain people, but I'm just I'm just highlighting how the energy is going to be really strong in the first house. So you don't want to just go ahead and act on trying to change something immediately, you know, that's actually dealing with your physical uh, presentation or appearance. If you catch an idea influence, sit on it first for a little bit. Let it resonate for a little bit. You feel me? If if this week passed by, you feel me, post full moon week passed by, you still resonate with that. All right, go ahead. Go, go bald. Go get the Amber Rose. If you want to go get the Amber Rose, go get the Amber Rose. I'm just saying, you don't want to just do it right now. You don't want to get the Amber Rose right now. Like, let it, like, give yourself a week and a half to know if you want that cut. All right? But, yes, detach it from what holds you back from new relationships as well. All right? If you feel like you're in a personal space, Leo Rising, where you're not even... You don't even allow yourself to be seen. You don't even allow yourself to for people to see you like that. Whether it's on the camera, social media, out in the world, you know, put yourself in a space to get seen so your seventh house can develop more relationships because that's what your son was trying to influence transiting the seventh house this season, Aquarius season. Um, but yes, there's going to be an intense look in the mirror. It's gonna be. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Of the, you gotta be careful of the Amber Rose. You feel me? Listen, I want to get dreadlocks. I want to get locks. Like every day, my passion for getting locks increases. But I know me. Like, like I know me. I'm a whole Libra. Like y'all know we wishy washy. So like, I don't know if I can make that commitment right now. Get them shits two months later. Like, oh, nah, nah. Cut this shit off. Cut this shit off. Like, nah, man. But I don't know. So, like, I'm trying not to be impulsive with it. So, shout out to my Leo Rising. You feel me? If you want to lock your shit, get the amber cut. Like, chill. Just, like, give yourself a week. If you still resonate, then do your thing, man. Do your thing. Might as well buy a ticket for a slut walk. Just do the whole shebang. Like, <laughs> come on over. I, I, I'm going to have to holler at you live from earlier. I'm going to have to holler at you when the time comes. Eventually, it's going to happen. Eventually, it's going to happen. Okay, finishing up the first house, intense look in the mirror, even with your image and how you express yourself and project yourself. All right. Let's say it, this is a time Leo rises. There may be something that you uh, really into that you want to start right now in your in your first house. You have a new personal, new personal creative endeavor. My life is the weekend, but now you speaking this shit. I'm like, yo. <laughs> if you've been resonating with it before this week, like way before this week, you Gucci, you Gucci. But, um, uh, Yes, when it comes to Leo Risings, when it comes to things that you want to personally express, you had a person, you, you want to be a YouTuber, you want to start doing this, you want to start public speaking, you want to be a motivational speaker, you want to start doing this, then the third, you want to start expressing your brand, your new brand and business more. You that all that shit coming up to the surface right now, Leo Risings, like it's just you being pushed to learn how to uh you know step into them shoes. You being put, you're gonna be feeling a lot of things once again when it comes to how you project yourself, how you express yourself, okay. 
Does this include Leo North Node? Well, it really depends if your if your North Node making contact with the full moon, it's gonna it's gonna be deep. It's gonna be intense, intense because the North Node pushing you into things that you need to experience in this lifetime. If you got the North Node in Leo, you going you are being pushed to experience being center stage, being more self expressive, dealing with your creative expression and a childlike energy within you. You're being pushed into that. You don't need to do nothing. If the North Node is in Leo, you manifest situations where you're center stage. It could happen early in life. So it could be in a, it could be in a family home, in a family. You just you just the center stage child, and your and it ain't no animosity with you with you and your siblings and shit. But you getting used to know what being center stage feel like. What the hate comes with it, the accolades and the hate, and learning how to deal with both. Okay, so if you got the full moon transiting uh, that North Node, touching that North Node, then you're just gonna have heavier downloads you know you're gonna dive deeper into your subconscious about understanding how to embrace these moments and possibly pushing yourself to be in a position to express yourself and be seen some more all right um beware of dramatic and drastic changes this could be temporary energy uh your self-awareness and your emotional intent can be very strong at the moment all right so self-awareness is gonna be you're gonna be real intuitive picking up things about yourself and your your personal experiences since I, since August eighth last year, all right. And your emotional intent is going to be strong, so you may feel like you need to react to these things now. That's why I said the whole shit about shaving your head and shit. You you need to be careful how you try to react to things now. Harness that energy. Write down what changes you're gonna make in your first house, and then apply that. That's how you use this shit. All right. It's how you transmute this energy. All right. So that's what we got. So that's what we got going on with that. First house. All right. Second house. Second house. We know the second house deals with your value system. Second house deals with your value system, your self-esteem. All right. How you value yourself, the things you feel like you're good at, the things you feel like you have, what you value out in the world, the type of people, places, and things that you value. And it has an influ uh, influence on security, stability, um, Security, stability, and uh, how we build in the physical realm. All right, shaving both heads. <laughs> y'all gotta chill. Y'all chill. Y'all gonna, gonna have to let me get through this today. All right. So second house, Leo in the second house. Now Leo in the second house already uh, is already hella prideful with, with what they feel like. If you ain't got nothing squaring opposing this house, especially if you a sun moon Leo yourself with Leo in the second house. What's this? This is my Virgo Risings. This is my Virgo Risings. Virgo Risings, man. Personally, personally, uh, excuse me, not Virgo Risings. Excuse me. This is my, my Gemini Risings. Cancer Risings. I'm bugging out right now. This is my Cancer Risings. Cancer in the first, Leo in the fifth. Cancers, man. Cancer Risings. They, they got some pride in that second house with Leo in there. They got some pride. And people be thinking cancer energy. Cancer energy, yes, it can be uh reserved and uh you know more you know shy, isolated at times. But listen, that shit a little different when it's in the first house. Like if you a cancer rising, but your sun, moon, and the air, fire, or whatever, you know, with that Leo in the second house, you going this this cancer rising will be expressive of what the fuck they good at, where their value is at. You could date a cancer rising, and when y'all start getting into shit relationships, the cancer rising will say to you, like, bitch, I know my fucking worth. I know my value. I'm not putting up for this in this relationship. Like that, a cancer rising will say that shit with Leo in the second house. Wherever Leo's at in the chart, we, we manifest attention and light there. Y'all need to know that. We manifest attention and light there in some type of way. In some type of way. All right. Now, second house, it's going to be the, the house of your value system is fully illuminated. All right. And you're going to have a full understanding of where and awareness when it comes to your value system around this time. You're really going to notice if you've been valuing bullshit or positive things. You know, if you've been dealing with a certain individual right now, you may start looking at them like, yo, I'm like, what do I really value in this individual? What do I really value in this relationship? How do they really support me? Like, you know, how do how can I really build with this individual? Like everything touches the value system in the second house. So you start feeling heavy on all the things that you value and you start observing these things uh, more closely. When it comes to investments, finances, career, this becomes priority like a motherfucker in the second house when it comes to your income 
When it comes to your bread, yo, y'all, sh shout out to my brother in the building, my Pisces brother in the building, Young Sparky. This is his, this is his, uh, yeah, y'all always see me with these, uh, with these optimistic hoodies, sweatsuits, and feel me and all that and all that. Y'all know the Lucky Libra be picking out some good colors. So y'all need to tap it with my bro, you feel me? Pisces, son. So you know he creative. You know he got flavors for y'all. All right. Now, um, second house. So yeah. When it comes to finances, careers, investments, all these things become high priority at the moment. You start looking at businesses that you was valuing a couple months ago, like, let me take my money up out that shit. You start looking at where you at in career, you like, what the fuck? I, I, I clearly don't appreciate myself because why would I settle with this position for this long, this many years? What, what, how much do I really value myself? Like, that's full moon in the motherfucking second house. And the full moon love to be in the second house. It, it, it's exalted here. So the second house deals with material possessions, the material realm, how we become comfortable in the material realm, self-esteem. So when the moon gets here, it's here to nurture and pour into all of that. So it's a self-esteem boost, self-esteem check. All right. It start, you start looking at the things that you have and you start seeing if you're using the shit or not. You've been told your whole life you sing good. You've been told your whole life you motherfucking uh, you write good. You talk good, you're funny, you're creative, all of that, all that shit that you know that you're good at, you it starts to come to the surface level from a subconscious perspective, and now you start to feel if you've been utilizing these things to help you build in the physical realm. That's what the second house shows us. How do we use what we have to build in this physical realm? First house is the I am. After the first house, is like, okay, I'm conscious, I'm here, or I'm in the solar system, I have life. I, I, I'm, I'm aware of myself. I am like I, I am. I, I'm aware of my consciousness. I'm aware of my I have awareness, period. When it gets to the second house, it's like, all right, I know I'm here. I know I am. I know I have consciousness. What the fuck do I have? What talents do I have? What am I good at? How's my self-esteem? Okay, how the fuck do I feel about myself and my talents and what I'm good at? All right. So depending on what planets and signs you have in the second house is how you deal with that. But with the full moon transiting here. All these things are heightened, all right? Buckling down with your responsibilities, full awareness on what you like and love and how you are connecting to it. This house also has a feel of, you know, how we get comfortable in reality and deal with our pleasures. So with the full moon in the second house, you might start feeling like, yo, what the fuck? I don't be experiencing what I be wearing experience in the physical realm. You feel me? I need to go on more dates. I need to go, uh, shit. I need to go, uh, in some type of shape or form. Finding ways to experience in the physical realm the way I'd like to. Or once again, you're going to start looking at the value around people, places, and things around you. So be careful if you you know, you know start feeling like you need to lash out on your partner because they not supporting you as much as you feel like they should be supporting you. It's great for you to acknowledge the support system in your relationship. But remember, these energies, we don't want to be super expressive or reactive around full moon time. That's how we transform shit, create crisis moments. All right? Because... With the moon full, emotions is high. So emotions, is, if emotions is high, you know, this is why a lot of shit changes and transforms. A lot of crisis moments, car accidents, people killing motherfuckers, going to jail. All that shit happens around full moon times because people didn't know how to just, you know, exhale, digest them emotions, let the transit pass, and then deal with the situation. You're just dealing with the shit in the heat of the moment. As soon as you realize something, full moons also bring realizations. So this is why if you got certain energies hitting your full moon, if you got certain alignments hitting your full moon, this might be a time a, a unexpected ass information comes out of nowhere from your partner or, or realizations about your partner, about your relationship, about the home, about your parents, about your damn self. Like all type of realizations come to the come to surface level with a damn full moon. All right. So, you know. The second house, you got to be careful if you start to, you starting to look at the va the value you place on your partner and now you have all these revelations about the ways they don't support you or you don't feel supported or whatnot. Nah, you're f they support your ass. The full moon is just heavy as hell and you need to be more realistic about what it is that you want and how you acquire it in the physical realm. Maybe your sense of gaining this type of pleasure or support is delusional. All right. So you have to be more realistic about how you obtain your pleasures. This is going to be a time full moon in the second house. You're going to be seeing if you're overindulging in things. You might be overindulging in a certain substance. You might be overindulging in, in shopping, overindulging in all different type of parts, areas of your life. Second house is how you experience the physical realm. So 
you know, if the full moon picks that up, you got to make sure you intuitive enough to pick that up and understand like, all right, I've been wilding on this. God damn, my credit card balance is brazy. Like, you feel me? Like, these are things you got to pick up on with the second, with the full moon chance in the second house. But, you know, highly motivated here to get your shit together when it comes to security and stability. It, it becomes a no nonsense, no tolerance for anything that's distracting how you want to build security and stability. So, you know, make the adjustments you need to around this time. Remember, don't be too impulsive, reactive, just digest it. Third house. Third house rules your surroundings, the environment you grew up in, your, your neighborhood, the things you learned in your neighborhood, the rules communication. I like to say you, the third house shows you how you became a product of your environment based off how people communicate and interact in your um, neighborhood, in your close surroundings. Influence on siblings, influence, influence on close relationships, and your neighbor, all right? So when we look at the third house, you know, the moon, the full moon is coming here and bringing full understanding and awareness and illuminating these areas. So when it comes to uh, situations with your social circle, with your friends, it might be something you just you might have been repressing with your friend. You feel like expressing that shit now. And it's the air house. And this house also influenced things with the mind. So we got communication and a lot of stimulated thoughts in this house with a full moon, with a full moon transit in here. So you really want to be really processing your thoughts and a lot of new ideas you're catching about things around this time. You really don't want to be making no impulsive actions, reactions when it comes to the thoughts and ideas you have around this time. Full moon transit in your third house. All right. You start expressing all type of shit to your motherfucking friends, loved ones, close ones right now. You feel me? And they look at you like you bugged out or you mad emotional about something. And you be right the whole time. You write about what you're talking about. It's just that you did it in an outburst type of way. You feel me? You communicated that shit crazy. <laughs> You know, so you're going to be feeling deeply when it comes to close friends, siblings might feel the need to change things in your surroundings to meet your emotional needs. The full moon deals with how we, uh, you know, react to things to meet our emotional needs. How do you know what your emotional needs are? Your moon sign. The sign your moon is in is what makes you feel the most is the energy, the frequency vibration that makes you feel the most comfortable and how you react. The house your moon in, your, the house you have the moon in, in your birth chart represents the area of life that you're always the most comfortable in, that you react to the most, that you really care about. All right. And you're going to develop a lot of emotional connections in the house through a person, place or thing, concept, idea, circumstance, project or whatever it is. You be emotionally connected to all type of shit in that house. All right. So this is how you know what your needs are. Your son, th those is your wants. The son is your wants. So if you have the sun and the moon opposite each other, squaring each other, your wants and needs stay clashing all the time. You be thinking your wants are your needs. <laughs> you feel me? I have, I'm a Libra sun, Capricorn moon. Libra and Capricorn square each other. You feel me? So my needs is earth shit, Saturn shit, you know, stability, security. Dealing with reality and my responsibility, self-development, discipline. Those are my needs don't not, dumb needs ain't got shit to do with the Libra constellation. Libra don't care about discipline. Libra don't be caring about uh 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 uh, uh you know the responsibilities. Hell no. Libra's more open open hearted with how it deals with its relationships. It's way more frivolous. It's way more unorganized at times. You feel me? It's way more concerned with relationships and other people while Capricorn is it. So a lot of times my wants and needs clash in many different ways. You know, so when you understand your true needs, you understand your true wants, you're like, okay, I be thinking I need that. I just want that. And I actually be, I actually need this, but this motherfucker be making me neglect my needs. This is what causes, you know, inner misunderstandings, the inner confusion, a.k.a. Our solar system is just hitting each other in different ways. Our sun and moon, just like the, uh, just like the motherfucking, uh, shit. Well, who squared each other today? I think the moon is in Gemini. So the moon is squaring Neptune and Pisces. So just like how the sun is squaring Neptune and Pisces right now, you incarnated with parts of your solar system clashing with each other at times. You feel me? So you ain't crazy. <laughs> you ain't crazy. All right, maybe you a little bipolar. Maybe you a little bipolar, all right? But still, <laughs> you all right. <laughs>
But you feel me? You ain't crazy. It's just life. And we're learning how to make all these different parts of ourselves complement each other, work with each other, learn from each other. You feel me? That's what the solar system is doing every single day. Every single day. And we just acting all of this shit out. You feel me? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Third house, third house. Don't want to branch off too much. So, yes, you may feel like you need to change things around your surroundings to meet your emotional needs. All right? Thank Yo, Jasmine, thank you. I'll be needing y'all to keep me accountable. Like, all right, boy, fourth house, fifth house, come on now. 20 minutes. I'll be needing that. I'll be needing that. So I appreciate that. Um, you, go, you may feel like you need to make changes to meet your emotional needs. So... It may be certain things you're picking up in your surroundings that you've tolerated for a while with your roommate, your sibling, your neighbor playing music at motherfucking 3 a.m. and shit while your ass got to be up at 6 a.m. You feel me, motherfucker? Trying to make the best mixtape of his life. He's trying to get up, get up out the hood. But you got to get to work. So it's like, hey, young brother. I know you're trying to, I know you're putting your life into this mixtape, but can we come to some type of uh, schedule here? All right. So it's like shit like that. Just for example, the tolerance for it is really low right now. Full moon transit in the third house. Whatever changes you feel like you need to make when it comes to relationships, close friends and your surroundings, you got to digest it. All right. Process it. Understand it. Don't impulsively move on it right now. Start to develop the idea how you're going to communicate to your neighbor or communicate to your friend after this motherfucking energy dwindle down a little bit. So you can have more of a heart so we can get closer to a solution. We don't want to add more friction to this shit. If you go to your neighbor that's trying to uh, make his mixtape around 3 a.m., um, can someone fill me in, please? When he's when he say third house, we talking if Leo is in your third house? Yes. Right now, I'm talking about the full moon in Leo. So this would be for my uh, third house. So this would be for my Gemini risings. Gemini. Yes, this is my Gemini risings. Okay. So, should have made some tea this morning. So, um, yes, you start to uh, pick up heavily on these things. Remember, the third house does rule the mind. Third house has a lot of influence on the mind. Things, knowledge you've learned at an early age, things you like to learn now. Also has an influence on communication, movement, travel. So full moon third house. If your motherfucking car got the check engine light, take that shit to the shit today. Y'all be letting that check engine light stay there a little too long. Just y'all be in your head just like, I hope it's just a I hope this one of my tires need air. I hope it ain't. <laughs> I hope ain't something really wrong with the engine. I hope I just need some more motherfucking washer fluid in my uh for my windshields or some shit. Y'all be having that check engine light on forever. If you don't take your car to go get an oil change or whatever you need to do, is a, a lot of things dealing with communication, moving around, traveling start to become of an emphasis. So it's like, like let's say you travel way too far from your crib to go to work. Is it's too exhausting? You gotta get up too early and then and then the traffic be crazy on the way back. So it's like by the time you get to the crib, you won't have time to enjoy your evening or whatnot. So this is the time to start understanding like what type of move you're going to make within your surroundings, how you're going to do things differently with your forms of travel, with your forms of transportation, all right, or potentially even moving things around with your job situation and your surroundings, possibly once again, full moon detaching and releasing. So you got the full moon trend in the third house. It may be, once again, that type of change in the third house may be actually changing your third house, changing your surroundings, you know, for whatever reason you feel like need be, but you want to take this time to understand that process. Okay. Um, a sense of urgency, addressing neighbors and friends, like I said, so that's why you want to process shit. Don't be, uh, impulsive. Uh, and that's what we got going on in the third house. All right. And also the third house, cause it deal with people, you know, full moon can influence us to Want to find answers for things. So because you got the full moon transit in your third house, you got to be careful how aggressive you are trying to find things out from your friends. Or you feel like motherfuckers being suspicious around you. You're not going to... There ain't going to be no tact with the way you try to commu communicate things. That shit going to be a little too harsh and explosive. So you got to be careful with that. All right? Fourth house. Hold on a second, y'all.
All right. Fourth house. Fourth house. Now, the fourth house, Um, we know the fourth house, this is where the moon is home at. This is where the moon is home at. This is where the moon loves to be. All right. This is where she feels the most comfortable. So the fourth house is dealing with our emotional well-being. It rules the heart chakra. We're dealing with matters in the home. We're dealing with the relationship with our mother. We're dealing with the relationship with our parents. We're dealing with family circumstances. All right. We're dealing with your home, your bedroom, your sanctuary, your space, your private space. So with the full moon coming here is illuminating all issues with the home, all circumstances in the home. Things that you need to change within your home. Th those are the things that's gonna be you're gonna be feeling heavy around the time. Anything playing out as an emotional burden, it's gonna be very intense at the time because when the moon is in the fourth house, it's like okay, I'm not gonna be in the, my own home feeling uncomfortable. For any planet being home, they, they're they're naturally comfortable there. So when the moon is in the fourth house, if she don't feel comfortable with her emotional well being and she's full, she can take drastic measures trying to get comfortable in the fourth house. So whether it's your partner, whether it's your child, whether it's your neighbor, whatever's going on in your home area, your home within your home circumstances, situations with your parents, your relatives or whatnot, your wife, your husband, you need to be careful of how you express these things because it could come out as a huge emotional outburst that can change a whole lot right now. You are going to be understanding things and things may be revealed to you out this fourth house. Your wife husband may reveal some shit to you, may find out some shit about your parents. You may just naturally do some subconscious digging and get closer to a root of an issue of a trauma that you have from the fourth house. So this is how we get to the healing here. All right. So feeling deeply on, feeling deeply on situations and circumstances in the home, realizations in the home. You may want a new home. So this is the time to write that down to start the manifestation process. I want to change my home, uh, my home environment. All right. Even if it ain't about physically where you at emotionally, you don't like where you have write that shit down. I want to be emotionally whole. I want to feel emotionally lighter moving on to the next new moon. You have you might have too much responsibilities or too much situations in the fourth house weighing heavy on the heart. OK. So, yeah, we intense emotions with the full moon trans in the fourth house is a given. You really want to be in your isolated space around this time. All right. Because uh, you're going to have low tolerance for emotional burdens. You're going to have low tolerance for it. So if you are in environments or around people that get on your nerves, make you somewhat uncomfortable in some type of shape or form. You don't even want to be around this environment, around these individuals at the moment. Because the way you might lash out, it, it's going to be hard to hold that motherfucker in with the full moon chance in your fourth house. But it helps to bring understanding about all these individuals that play out as emotional burdens. All right. Root issues come to light when it comes to traumas and all of that. So it gives us an opportunity to heal in this area. And you want to take note of changes you want to make in the home. All right. Especially if you want to move. If this is a great time to start initiating that, putting that in the air, you have full moon in the fourth house. This might be an area, a space we need to detach from, release from, all right? Fifth house. Fifth house deals with entertainment. This is the house that uh, or, uh, developed the Leo constellation, all right? So when you look at the fifth house, we're dealing with all them Leo-like themes. Creative house, entertainment house, how you like to have fun, social house, all right? We're dealing with romance, sex, and love in this house, all right? It gets spicy in the fifth house. Uh, we're connecting to the child like in you, all right? Don't matter how old you are. You have a fifth house. All right. So your ass should be diving into some form of fun entertainment or diving into your creative attributes, no matter how old your ass is. All right. There's a there's a form of a fifth house activity for you at whatever stage of life you in. You feel me? We got some other we got a 16 year old right now. She throwing a sweet 16 is about to be lit. Everybody from her high school about to be there. We got a 21 year old about to have a 21 year old birthday party. That shit about to be lit. About to be a bunch of motherfucking 21 year olds in that moment. You got a 40 year old uh, lounge club party. The grown and sexy suits. No jeans. There's a fifth house for everybody. All right? There's a fifth house for everybody. So, AKA, you all, we all have the potential to deal with some form of creative self expression in some type of shape or form. So, with the full moon transiting in the fifth house, your lack of fun and entertainment becomes a. Uh, priority here. If you've been lacking how you, if you've been slacking on how you like to have fun or be entertained, you gonna start uh, with the full moon chance in this fifth house. You gonna start be uh, feeling like, yo, I just be working. 
taking care of these responsibilities, planning my schedule, doing this, that, and the third, seeing what I got to build. Like, God damn. Shit, a brother need to go go on a date, go to the movies or something. Like, you feel me? Like, you know, got that fifth house energy in this. So, you know, love, romance, and, you know, a brother want to wanna Netflix and chill with somebody right now. Like, God damn, I don't be having no fun. I'm a whole Cap Moon Rising, too. So, I really, I be having my friends tell me this shit. <laughs> He's like, yo, you gonna be ready to go out at eight? Like, shit, I gotta go live at seven. Uh, give me another hour. Give me two hours. Like, come on, Boro. Come on, bro. Oh, my God, I finished this reading. Hold on. I woke up late today, y'all. What time the club? What time the club? Uh, what time the club close? What time? What time they stop letting people in there? 10? All right, give me two hours. Give me two hours. Let me knock this responsibility out real quick. So be careful of neglecting your fifth house. Neglecting your fifth house is why you get why you get wrinkly skin. All right. Neglecting your fifth house is how you get more gray hairs and shit. It's how you increase your stress levels. Take take your ass outside. Have some fun. Have a day where you just say fuck a responsibility. I'm binging. I'm Netflix binging today. And I'm going to eat that, that whole shit of ice cream and the shit. I ain't saving none of that shit for tomorrow. You feel me? Now, we don't want to overindulge, but shit, there's some day spirits like, come on, man. I just I just need me a little spiritual vacation. Like, we just need a little uh, vacation from reality real quick. Let's get into some fifth house energies. All right? If you got some Leo friends, you got some Leo relatives, siblings, they they the ones probably influencing, the, influencing this in your life a lot. So our Leos play around too goddamn much. We got to do the opposite with Leos. We be having to tell some Leos, get serious, bro. You play around too much. Leos be playing around in the most serious moments. And it's like, they'll be playing around in a moment that's serious for them and like won't get caught doing what they doing. Like Leos is just crazy. I don't know. Leos is crazy. They rule by the sun. They just be working all type of magic. So yes, full moon through the fifth house. Your lack of fun and entertainment. This is This is highlighted. And when I say your lack of fun and entertainment, in general, the connection to your inner child, some of our inner childs is just lonely as a motherfucker. Don't even have an imaginary friend. Lonely as a bitch. <laughs> some of us don't be connected to that little nigga at all. You feel me? Like, I know we in our 20s. I know we in our 30s. I know we got careers, jobs, responsibilities. Some of us got children and shit. I know we got more responsibility, but that inner child and you don't leave, like... Some people don't be start connecting back to that motherfucker until they like 40, 50 in therapy and shit. And you like, damn, I ain't gonna lie. I always wanted to play the piano, but you know, my mom, she just wanted me, she kept talking about going to law school and shit, you know? You think you think you think it's too late to, you know, go to piano take piano lessons, doctor? Like, like, come on, y'all. What? We don't need to be asking our therapist shit like that. If you don't take your ass to uh <laughs> To Amazon, get you a little keyboard joint and start getting crazy. Like, you feel me? So, like, full moon and fifth house, like, stop playing. What's this? This is my Leo in the fifth house. This is my what? This is my Sag Risings. Excuse me, my Aries Risings. I'm bugging out. Y'all got to chill, Aries Risings. Y'all got to chill. Y'all got to chill. Go get that keyboard. Go get that motherfucker. They got apps to show you how to play piano and all that. Uh... So that's the that's really the hugest em emphasis here. All right, uh, you know your your personal creative endeavors. These are going to be highlighted. So you're going to start feeling like, damn, how am I using my creative attributes? Do I be ignoring, neglecting my pastimes, my create the things that even if I'm not even saying you got to express any of this shit. You know, even though it has an influence on expressing, a lot of this shit going to be like for you. It may be things you used to do by on your own. That was a form of creative expression that just fulfilled you. The full moon gonna remind you, get back to that. Go back to them paying sips. Go back to fucking plant, going to that bowling, skating rink that you used to go to when you was young. Like, start doing them things again. Start getting back in touch with your inner child. Because that little nigga lonely as hell right now. Alright? He ain't got no friends, no nothing. He just be watching you do mad responsibilities. Just watching you take care of reality. Like, fuck all that shit. Alright? Um... You you can be highly expressive here. You can be one of the more impulsive express uh, uh, people expressing their goddamn selves right now with the full moon change in the fifth house because you a whole Aries rising, so you got Leo in the fifth house. Y'all already expressive as a motherfucker in the fifth house. Now you got the full moon transiting here. So things 
uh, you can take things that's a blocking, distracting, clashing, restricting yourself or creative expression. That could be highly frustrating right now. You having a de- you having a debate or you going back and forth. You have an exchange with somebody, and you you start taking shit personal when they saying like wh- what they know, and how they know more than what you know, or how they have more of awareness about something than you. This could create real argumentative energy with the full moon chance in the fifth house. All right, this that this that uh this that temptation. That this this that temptation five heartbeats type energy. You feel me? Like motherfuckers get real dramatic with a full moon in the fifth house. Niggas start ripping sleeves off of each other on the on the on the in the concert on the stage. Niggas just get into fights. Niggas can't even get into the choreography and the routine. We can't even get into the second verse. Cause motherfucking Otis and uh David Ruffin fighting on this on the stage and shit. So don't let your dramatic shit. Don't let what's overwhelming you be highlighted to the whole world and just look like a whole mess with the full moon transit in Leo right now. Especially if you got placements in motherfucking... Especially if you had placements in fire. You got Lilith in fire. You got uh, 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 Mars in fire. You got to chill. You definitely got to chill. Um... And love matters and romance, these things are intensified as well, too. So you start might you might start looking at your partner around you might around full moon time, you might be texting your partner at work, like tonight. That's it. Just one word. Like tonight. Your partner, what you talking about? Partner call you like you good? You're like, yeah, I'm good. I want some tonight though. I want some tonight. I don't want to hear nothing. Uh, it's going down. I'm not taking no for an answer. If I got to run the red light, I don't care what we doing tonight. Like, so the, the sexual uh, influences be up here too. So be sexually responsible. All right. Be sexually responsible around this time. Full moon transiting the fifth house. Okay. Um, you know, you don't want to just lose yourself because sensations and shit is so fucking high. If you got a partner with that, you got somebody you dating, you feel me? Somebody you intimate with, you feel me? Do your thing. Do your thing. Do your thing, but just don't be just don't be jumping into some crazy ass energy just for, just because you want to feel liberated. <laughs> that's the word nowadays for us to just be. Just, that's the word right uh, nowadays when it comes to somebody that don't give a fuck about sexual discipline. I feel liberated. Yeah, all right, liberated. All right, that's why your ass bipolar. You got a hundred fucking energies connected to your ass. You got hundred, you got hundred energies connected to your ass. You can't go a month without sex or masturbation. Sexual desires is too heavy. Yeah, the full moon energy is going. It's going to highlight all of that shit transiting your fifth house. All right, shit. The full moon in Leo. Period. Honestly, honestly, it just becomes more intense for the people for Aries risings. Already got one scope. Your kid nope. <laughs> so uh. Yeah, man. Be wise. Protect yourself. Wrap it up. So that's the fifth house. Sixth house. Sixth house. But now, all jokes aside, though, all jokes aside, full moon transit in the fifth house. Uh, you got. Uh, you got to be. Cra- you got to be careful because it's like um, you can't be a little aggressive with your partner and shit intimately and shit. They be looking at you like, yo, babe, calm down. Like, what's good? Like, like, shut up, nigga. Like. So you got to be careful. Like you, you don't want to overdo it right now. And when it comes to love matters and romance, period, you can find yourself uh, being a little frustrated, trying to get an expression out your partner. You may want your partner to be expressing themselves a certain way. Now, this full moon and Leo got you got you tripping because you feel like they not as invested. They don't feel care this way because they're not expressing themselves in a certain way. You got to be careful picking up that energy. That shit could be real temporary. And then at the same time, you got to understand the love language of your partner. All right. You got to understand the love language of your partner. All right. I'm ending this, picking up the sixth house. 